Thank you very much, uh, <clears throat> Mr. Chair, and it's my pleasure and the privilege to be here. I hesitated when the organizers uh, contacted me saying, well, so are you going to use PowerPoint or not PowerPoint? Long, long time of hesitation because it's my style, preferred style, to make a presentation by using PowerPoint and also walking around. So by making this choice of not presenting PowerPoint, I still feel a little bit jealous about some of the previous speakers <laughs> who showed nice slides. However, I try to do my best so that you can at least capture a few take-home messages at the end of my talk. Um, I would like to start uh, saying that, and also sharing the observation with you that foodborne disease problems are invisible. They are invisible. So this is a reason why we repeatedly say, and all the experts agree that we need to do something. We include food safety importance in all kinds of UN declarations. ICN 1, ICN 2, World Food Summit. But we still need this meeting. And we still need FAO, WHO, International Food Safety Conference next year. Why? Because the problem is still invisible. Let me reflect a little bit on why the food safety problems are often invisible. And I can at least identify four factors. One is the lack of specificity. You get diarrhea. But what is the cause? Maybe the dirty hand you shook with your friend the day before? Uh, it could be some you know, bad water you drank? Or it could be food. It could be something else. So most of the foodborne diseases develop symptoms that are not specific to certain hazard or agent. This is a true for stunting. This is true for liver cancer. This is true for chronic renal disease. This is true for mental retardation. There's no specificity between symptom and the cause, number one. Number two, there is a massive underreporting. Again, imagine that you have diarrhea today or tomorrow. What is the chance that you will go and see a doctor Maybe one in 10 times. It means that for nine, nine out of 10 times, you stay at home. Maybe you will not go working, but you suffer yourself, you drink, and then you wait until the diarrhea is over. You don't consult a doctor. Even if you consult a doctor, what is the likelihood of this doctor asking you questions about what food you have eaten? Uh, I'm a medical doctor by <laughs> training, but in a very, very stressful and busy working period, doctor will not bother asking you this kind of question. And even if the doctors suspected that your diarrhea is linked to something you have eaten two days ago, does this doctor bother himself to report this incidence to the local authority? If you add up those kind of unreporting factors, you would end up with an enormous rate of underreporting. For, for example, the listeria caused a massive incidence in South Africa recently. But in this country, listeria infection was not a reportable disease. It was not notifiable disease. So even if doctors suspected listeria, oh, I saw two patients of listeria, there's no mechanisms for the country to get statistics. Of course, they have changed the legislation, and it is now notifiable. So this is one of the, 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 well, the second uh, factor, why foodborne diseases stay invisible. Number three, unclear responsibility. Sometimes you say, well, to, to consumers, 
You are responsible because you didn't cook your own meat properly. So you are responsible. Consumers may say, well, no, 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 it's my not responsible. My butcher who uh, sold me contaminated or dirty meat is responsible. Oh, no, 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 I'm not responsible, butcher says. Well, the beef producer is responsible. They may say, no, 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 Minister of Agriculture is responsible. You know, if you start witch hunting, criminal hunting, the, it's not, it doesn't lead to a healthy discussion, and we will end up with very vague, uh, you know, we cannot, it doesn't help us to put in place a unified front to recognize everyone's responsibility and everyone's part to play. So this is the third factor. And the f last uh, uh, factor I would say is that the media is not so keen to report on foodborne diseases. Even if we have data, we have some visibility in 20th century and 21st century, if the media doesn't report on this, we stay still invisible. And most of pathogens or toxins that affect food contamination, that lead to food contaminations were discovered in the 19th century or during the first half of the 20th century. Well, we experts know that salmonella is not the same. We see some new strains coming up. E. coli today is not the same E. coli one century ago. But for the media people, for journalists, oh, E. coli, it's all the story. Salmonella, we have heard about it. But they, you know, those journalists who will jump onto Ebola outbreak or other, you know, more visual and I apologize for my word, more photogenic incidents, do not report on food safety. So WHO thought that the first step we need to take is to visualize what is invisible. And 2006, WHO started an initiative to quantify the global burden of foodborne diseases, and it took us 10 years. So it took three food safety directors. The one who initiated, the second one who continued, and I had a privilege to report on the outcome uh, two years ago. Well, some of the previous speakers already mentioned the figures, so I will not uh, spend more time, but I would I invite all of you to visit the WHO website, where we have nice slides to summarize the burden estimates globally or by region. And because all those who are here are opinion leaders, and you have influence, so please use WHO's infographics in your future presentations. Just to mention that uh, we estimated that 33 million disability-adjusted life years are lost every year. Only as an outcome of the 31 selected foodborne pathogens or chemicals. Unfortunately, it was not possible for WHO to include the impact of four heavy metals, methylmercury, lead, uh, arsenic, and cadmium in these first estimates. But experts are now submitting a paper who concluded that about nine million dollars are lost because of the four, only four heavy metals. Because two studies were done slightly in a different uh, way, we need to be cautious about addition through 33 million to nine million to get 42 million, but it will indicate and as uh, one of the previous speakers mentioned, in terms of the, 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 the order of magnitudes, it's comparable to tuberculosis, it's comparable to HIV AIDS, it's comparable to malaria. Now, we have some data to act on. What do we need to do now? Is to convert the information and evidence into action. 
we've got global data, we've got nas uh, regional data, but we don't have national data with the exception of a few developed countries. So what kind of uh, investment case we need to present to those who are willing to invest in food safety? WHO is providing by next year, hopefully, a country tool which will allow countries to estimate the national burden of foodborne diseases, either for the totality of foodborne diseases or they can pick up some diseases. So depending on what the finance ministry or development donors wants to see, the country can choose what kind of data they want to develop. And number two, and I count on my ne next speaker to touch on this issue, uh, foodborne disease has a health outcomes in the core, but in the surrounding areas, there will be a huge amount of burden, economic burden, in terms of lost exports, in terms of absenteeism in schools, in terms of uh, damaged image for the tourism. There is a lot of circles surrounding direct health impact, which is due to the foodborne diseases. And we need to have some estimates on the overall burden, not only public health burden, but also economic burden of foodborne diseases. And last but not least, I think we need to get consumers on our side. Only in a transparent and reactive society, we can create a positive circle where consumers ask for safer food, industry try to report on it, and uh, governments or authorities will be act as a, a broker of this negotiation and uh, let's say a circle which is going up. If there is no free media, there is no working justice system, then in those countries quite often the same problems happens again and again and the progress is impeded. So what we need is to translate data into action and also, last but not least, we need a good outcome indicators. And these days, big foundations or development agency will not invest in any food safety project if you are not able to mention, well, this is the outcome indicator we will measure every year and we will demonstrate progress. But in many cases, we don't have appropriate, even proxy indicators to measure the progress. So these are some thoughts uh, I just wanted to put on the table. Thank you, Mr. Chair.